So it appears that in the final days heading up to Election Day, it's becoming a battle of quotes. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. I mean, Not Sunday good ones. we have the uh, garbage comment about Puerto Rico. That's followed up by President Biden's garbage comment. Yep. Uh, you know, Mark Cuban is now in trouble with mm-hmm. a quote that he made. And then there's uh, President Trump talking about women and how he's going to protect them. Let's listen to it from his mouth. And my people told me about four weeks ago, I was saying, no, I want to protect the people. I want to protect the women of our country. I want to protect the women. Sir, please don't say that. Why? They said, we think it's we think it's very inappropriate for you to say, so why? I'm president. I want to protect the women of our country. They said, they said, sir, I just think it's inappropriate for you to say, pay these guys a lot of money. Can you believe it? I said, well, I'm going to do it whether the women like it or not. I'm going to protect them. And so it's that part, the whether they like it or not, that uh, Democrats are trying to turn into a controversy. This is what Vice President Kamala Harris had to say about it. The former president, Donald Trump's uh, remark about women and um, and whether they like it or not. And listen, it's just it actually is I think, very offensive to women in terms of not understanding their agency, their authority, their right, and their ability to make decisions about their own lives, including their own bodies. And this is just the latest on a series of reveals by the former president of how he thinks about women and their agency. So, Dana, uh, are you okay with being protected by Trump, whether you like it or not? In the context of what he was saying, yes, because he was talking about illegal immigration and the women that have been raped and murdered by illegal migrants. And he was saying, I'm going to do what I can to secure the border and protect women, whether they like it or not. And I think that that's fine. I think it's being taken out of context. Why are you looking at me like that? No, I I, I just I don't understand the people he has around him. What the hell uh, are they getting paid all that money for? It, it, like saying that you want to protect women. Now, the like it or not comment, I, I don't think it's a big deal. Uh, but putting that aside, if Trump just wanted to go out and say, I want to protect women, who the hell is telling him don't say that? That's- well, because I think they know that he tends to just go off the rails a little bit and he'll mm-hmm. he'll follow it up with something like whether they like it or not. And they yeah. know that everything he says gets twisted around and, and, and manipulated and they put it out there. So his people are trying to tell him, you know, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't say this. And he basically just admitted what we've said all along, that his campaign people are, are – we've said so how many times? Doesn't he have people around him advising him not to do certain things? And he keeps doing mm-hmm. them. And he's admitting, yeah, I do have people and I pay them a lot of money, but I'm not going to listen to what they say. Well, and they haven't figured out by now. If you tell Trump not to do something, he's, he's going to do, do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think maybe they need to start taking a look at that. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if everybody, every woman sees it the same way as Dana, though. No, clearly that, not. Yeah. I think that when you when you throw in the like it or not, it sort of uh, has a tone of mansplaining or I'm going to protect you in the way that I think you should be protected. And I think that's sort of where women are like, well, why do I need that? I I don't need somebody to tell me how I need to be protected. And I think in the context of what Kamala Harris was saying, a lot of women may have taken that to include abortion rights and some other issues. Yeah, I, he wasn't talking about that, though, you know, there. Well, now, I've mansplained a lot to you, Dana, uh, on this show. Uh, <laughs> does that strike you as mansplaining? Uh, no, it really doesn't bother Like, it doesn't bother me. I kind of just think it's funny. Like, I laugh at you. But, um, but I also wonder if maybe... And I'd have to go back and listen to it again because I don't want to be like what we do with Biden and trying to dismiss his comment. But I wonder if the whether they like it or not is him saying whether his campaign staff likes it or not. Like, I'm going to protect women whether they like it or not, like whether they like that I'm saying this or not, meaning mm, his staff. Yeah, I don't know. That's, Did he mean it that way? Just I mean, like we uh, could, was there an apostrophe in supporters <laughs> exactly. uh, for Biden's comment? Yeah, I, you I don't can know. T- kind of analyze these quotes a lot yeah. and try to pick them apart. I think yeah. it's I think it's silly season at the end of an election. To well, be honest. again, I mean, it's another example. Does does this make a difference? It's like the whole yeah. thing with the uh, Puerto Rico garbage quote. Is mm-hmm. that going to move voters or is it just a, a, you know, a flash in the pan incident? Right. We'll find out, I think, on Election Day. And it may take some while to analyze whether these things had any impact on specific votes. Yeah, well, Dana, you're going to be protected whether you like it or not. And you're going to vote the way your man tells you to vote. <laughs> There's no man telling me what to do right now. And I'm actually quite happy with my life the way it is. What else is going on, Chris? Well, here in Florida, we're not a swing state, but we obviously have tons of interest in the amendment issue. Issues, mm-hmm. particularly Amendment 3 and Amendment 4. Generally, those don't get attention from elected officials uh, one way or the other. They're not generally supposed to be taking sides, especially if it involves taxpayer money. Case, Casey DeSantis has come out and said that 
it would be irresponsible for her to not use her position to push uh, her position on you know this particular uh, amendment. And specifically, she's been out there talking about Amendment 3 mm-hmm. and the potential dangers of uh, marijuana being legalized in the state for recreational use. And it's controversial because the governor has yet to put out exactly how much money taxpayers are spending right. to push his particular position on this issue and That's the thing. and the abortion rights issue. Yeah, we talked to Katie Legrone, investigative reporter, in the 6 o'clock hour. We're going to have that podcast for you if you missed it. Just search for Ryan Gorman Show on your iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, and you can go to ryangormanshow.com and find it there, too. Look, Casey DeSantis can go and do whatever she wants. She can do as many events as she wants, pushing back against Amendment 3, Amendment 4. Uh, The governor can do the same. It's when you start bringing out state officials, officials running specific agencies, and you start bringing them into the political process, and you use taxpayer dollars as uh, funding for PSAs, public service announcements, that are really ads designed to push back against these amendments that's when there's a problem that's when i and and i would have a problem if you had a democrat in office doing the same thing trying to promote people to vote for these amendments that's the issue here uh yeah one report says that some of the money was diverted from the uh, opioid settlement yeah which is supposed to go obviously to people who are uh, dealing with the opioid addiction Mm -hmm. issue that doesn't have anything to do with Amendment 3 or Amendment 4. So why no. would money be diverted from that settlement yeah. to pay for PSAs on TV stations? Right. No no problem with uh, Governor DeSantis or Casey DeSantis being out in front uh, against these amendments. No problem with uh, them doing ads paid by outside groups if they wanted to, paid for by outside groups, or uh, if they had to travel the state uh, using private money for that to campaign against all of this stuff. Once you start getting into state officials and funding from the state, for uh, that kind of pushback against those amendments, that, I think, is where you're crossing a line. I don't know uh, legally if you're crossing a line there, but I think ethically you certainly are. Uh, Chris Trankman with today's top stories. Chris, thanks so much. Thank you.